Thanks for checking out this video and I'm going to break down for you what is coming to the Shutter streaming service in August. Yes, this time I'm going to get it up uh, early before the month starts. When I did the July one, it was actually within the first week of July because I got busy. But, sorry, I look like I've just been working out because I have just been working out. Um, so I look a little bit sweaty. So please excuse that if I'm like extra glistening with my light here. Um, I was sweating. But anyway, I just wanted to do this real quick because I just got the email from Shutter today breaking down everything that's going to be on uh, coming on the streaming service in August. So I'll go over this stuff. Uh, so the big thing first off is Nosferatu, which is a new show that was on AMC. It's actually based on a Joe Hill book, which if people don't know who Joe Hill is, he's Stephen King's son. It's a whole thing where for the first like certain number of years of his career, he wasn't going by his normal name. He is known by Joe Hill, which isn't his given name. He just wanted to be able to make it on his own without people knowing who his father was. And then after he was successful, he's like, guess what? My father's Stephen King. But anyway, the show Nosferatu is based off of a book that he wrote. It's a very thick book because I looked at buying it at one point. And I was like, uh, I don't know if I'm ready to commit to that right now. But I've heard really good things about the book. The TV show, which originally aired on uh, the first season, is only out at the moment. It originally aired on AMC, which the reason Shudder's getting it is because AMC owns Shudder. So it makes sense, and I'm, I'm down with that. I like it. So, uh, yeah, so Nosferatu, I, I know only one person who's actually watched the first season of that show. I had interest in it because of the book, but he was kind of like, eh, on it, but he said that towards the end it really started to pick up, which, you know, shouldn't really be that much of a surprise to people. I feel like so many times with TV shows – that, that initial season, they it, it seems very slow. It seems like you're dealing with a lot of stuff that people aren't all that into because it's character development. They need you to understand who the characters are, kind of set up the world, all that stuff. So honestly, if people are kind of eh about a first season, that doesn't concern me at all. I'll definitely check it out because it's usually after that is when things really start to pick up because things have been established. So I will be checking out Nosferatu. I am interested. The first episode of that is going to be going up Thursday, August 8th just so people know. Um, I'm not going to read through the the whole review of it, but it's basically, in a nutshell, uh, a vampire kind of dude who uh, it has this really cool old car. I think it's called a Wraith. I think it's, a, it's an actual car called a Wraith. And it's um, the car runs on souls. And then there's some other characters involved, and it's this whole big thing. But anyway, I will be checking it out. You probably should too. Uh, the next thing to know about is a Shutter, I believe it's an exclusive, yeah, a Shutter exclusive called Incident in a Ghost Land, and is from 2018. Uh, a mother of two who inherits a house is confronted with murderous intruders on the first night in their new home and fights for her daughter's lives. Sixteen years later, when the daughters reunite at the house, things get really strange. Okay, I mean, that could go either way, but I'd be willing to check it out. Then we have a Shudder original. Actually, they commissioned this to be made. Uh, it's called Beelzebuth, Beelzebuth, a 2017 film. Actually, it has Tobin Bell in it, so I'm immediately in. I do like that guy. Met him, really nice guy. Set on both sides of the U.S.-Mexico border, this, this Spanish-slash-English-language film follows Special Agent Emmanuel Ritter as he leads a police investigation into a series of mysterious deaths involving young, young children at the border. The case takes a supernatural turn when a priest from the Vatican links the ancient demon Beelzebuth to the murders. Is that supposed to be Beelzebub? But it's spelled B-E-L-Z-E-B-U-T-H. I don't know. Or maybe that's like an old Latin spelling. I don't know. I don't know. Not familiar with that stuff. Here's exciting. Here's something exciting. They're going to, put, to be putting up the first six Nightmare on Elm Street movies. So for anyone out there who doesn't own those or doesn't have ready access to the first six Nightmare on Elm Streets, you're going to be want, want to be watching Shudder in August because they're a lot of fun. Uh, I'm not as excited personally because I actually own the entire box set. Um, so the first six, basically that's all the movies except Wes Craven's New Nightmare, um, which is a pretty nice film. Uh, one of the better of theirs, uh, or of that series. So, um, yeah, that's exciting. People check that out. I don't need to go over it. 
Everyone knows A Nightmare on Elm Street. Check them out. Uh, then here's the new movies for August. July 29th. So they're counting that as August because it's the very end of July. Uh, a movie called Moon, which came out in 2009. On the far side of the moon, lone miner Sam trudges to the end of his three-year stint for a mega corporation that has hit a gold vein by harvesting lunar rock for energy. So far, it sounds terrible. With only a self-mechanized robot, Jesus, whose only human feature is a happy face, sad face component for company, Sam shows signs of cabin fever. Hallucinating and obsessing about his wife and daughter on Earth, his fragile condition deteriorates, exacerbated when he gets whacked on the noggin as he crashes his rover on the lunar surface. Sam emerges to find an aggressive version of himself tromping around the space vehicle. Hallucination? Clone? Doppelganger? That sounds terrible. I am not going to check that one out. But I will say that Sam Rockwell and Kevin Spacey are in it. It was good acting, so I don't know. But that sounds awful. Um, here, here's a 2014 short film called El Gigante. After attempting to cross the U.S.-Mexico border in search of a better life, Armando awakens in an unknown room. His body broken down and a Lucha Libre mask sewn into his neck. Interesting. He attempts to escape but is surrounded by a sadistic family who watch him with hungry eyes. The only chance for Armando's survival in this hellish nightmare is the last in a wrestling match against the most terrifying villain of all, Gigante. Oh, dude. That sounds fun. I think I'm going to have to check that one out. It sounds like it could be awful, but it also sounds like it could be good, and it also sounds like it could be, like, awful fun. I don't know. But I want to check it out, because that, that's pretty... That's a funny... That's funny. Uh, the next one is a... 2018 short film called a Qu uh, the quiet room after a failed suicide attempt michael's belief michael michael's beliefs it's not written right michael believes that he's awakened hattie a demon who according to urban legend haunts his hospital's quiet room now he must find a way to stop her before a rampage claims everyone michael connects with yeah i don't know probably won't check that one out personally that one is also uh, El Gigante and The Quiet Room are also July 29th. So, August 1st, first, first is a Brian De Palma film called Raising Cain from 1992. The story of twin brothers Carter and Josh, one good and one evil, who will stop at nothing to find children to further their father's psychological experiments. Now that sounds good, and John Lithgow's in it, and it's Brian De Palma, so I'm in. I haven't seen that one. I'm in. Uh, these next two I'm also in for because I've heard good things and I haven't seen them. People, when you hear what they are and you're like, you haven't seen them, just calm down. It's all right. Uh, August 5th, The Slumber Party Massacre from 1982. When Trish decides to invite her high school girls basketball teammates over for a slumber party, she has no idea the night is going to end with an unexpected guest, an escape mental patient and his portable power drill, crashing the party in this cult classic. Yeah, I'm excited for that. I'm definitely excited for that. Because that's been on my list of horror movies to watch that I have heard are fun slash good. Uh, then Slumber Party Massacre 2, a 1987 film. Courtney, the younger sister of the new girl across the street in the first film, is all grown up now, but suffers from nightmares about the big wet incident. She and the other members of her female rock group go to a condo for the weekend to play music and have fun with her, their boyfriends. Oh, that doesn't sound like it's going to go wrong. Courtney's dreams are of her sister, who is in a mental institution, warning her of having sex, and the dreams begin to spill into real life, threatening Courtney and her friends as they begin experiencing an attrition problem. Okay. That one doesn't sound as interesting, but, you know. Okay. The next one I'm going to give you, I, I'm not excited for me personally, again, because I own this movie and I can watch it anytime. I have it on Blu-ray. It, it's a good time. It's a terrible movie, but it's fun terrible. Chopping Mall. Chopping Mall from 1986. A group of teenagers who work at the mall get together for a late night party in one of the stores. When the mall goes on lockdown before they can get out, the robot security system malfunction, malfunctions and goes on a killing spree. I believe Barbara Crampton shows up in it in, in like a small role. Uh, the next one, Get My Gun, which is a 2017 film. After an incident 
Oh, sorry. After an innocent prank leaves Amanda pregnant and out of a job. What? Wait, a prank leaves her pregnant? Okay, this is weird. Okay, after <laughs> after an innocent prank leaves Amanda pregnant and out of a job, she finds herself on the verge of motherhood and the target of a psychotic stalker who will stop at nothing to get her hands on the unborn child. I'm interested to know how that how that's an accident. I don't know. I'm uh, I'm iffy on this on that movie. I'm iffy on that one. Why horror? Okay, I've seen this one. This is a documentary kind of about why people are into horror. But I'll read the thing. It's a 2014 documentary. Tal Zimmerman is a horror journal journalist and a full-fledged fan of everything deep, dark, and disgusting. But lately, he's been asking himself, why? Why is it that he and millions of other people are obsessed with horror? Tal sits down with leading genre filmmakers, writers, musicians, historians, anthropologists, and psychologists around the world to discover why we enjoy being scared. It is a good documentary. It's a lot of fun. I wouldn't say it's like the best horror documentary, but it's a good one. Uh, I think the best one is, I think it was called um, Nightmares in Red, White, and Blue. That one is amazing. It's very academic. It breaks horror down by decades and ties it into socio-political climates. It's amazing. That one's wonderful. It's not on Shutter though. I don't think. Mm, I don't think. Check for that one. Nightmares in Red, White, and Blue. Uh, August nineteenth, uh, the movie Bad Moon, which is from nineteen ninety six. Ted is working in Nepal when he and his girlfriend are attacked by a mysterious creature. Ted, though brutally maimed, survives, but his girlfriend is not so lucky. Lucky to help his recovery, Ted moves close to his sister Janet and her son Brett, but soon realizes he was attacked by. A werewolf. Well, that tells you everything. Come on now. Uh, I probably will watch that one because I think there's a severe lack of werewolf films out there, and I'm down. I like werewolves. Uh, 1981 film called Hell Night. Sorority and fraternity pledges are required to spend the title evening of their initiation inside the spooky Garth Manor. The mansion was the site of a gruesome multiple murder, of course, wherein the owner killed his wife and three of his four deformed children before t taking his own life. After the pledge is bed down for the night, mischievous upperclassmen descend into the house, intending to scare them out of their wits, but something even more repulsive than a pack of drunken frat boys beats them to it. Linda Blair's in this, by the way. Yeah, she's the only, like, big name. So, mm, I'm thinking about that one. That one sounds, yeah, maybe. I'm, I'm, I might do that one. Uh, then August 26th, and these are the last two movies, so thanks for sticking with me. Humanoids from the Deep, from 1980. Uh, scientific experiments backfire and produce horrific mutil mutate, not mutilations, mutations, half man, half fish, which terrorize a small fishing village by killing the men and raping the women. Wow. I'm definitely going to check that one out. I really like creature features, and this sounds like a bad but like fun, bad, potential creature feature. I haven't heard of this. Humanoids from the Deep? Or maybe, I think I've actually heard that title before, but I didn't know much about it. That sounds fun. I'm going to check that out. And then the last one is called The Love Witch, which is from 2016. Elaine, a beautiful young witch, is determined to find a man to love her, but her spells work too well, leaving her with a string of hapless victims. With a visual style that pays tribute to Technicolor, Thrillers of the 1960s, oh, interesting, The Love Witch explores female fantasy and the repercussions of pathological narcissism. We could all learn a few things about pathological narcissism. I'm sure everyone out there knows someone in their life who's like that, and it sucks. Um, might, I don't know, I'm iffy on that one too. But anyway, that's all I got for you. In summation, there's some good stuff coming. There's definitely some good stuff coming. Um, I'm definitely excited for, to check out Nosferatu. I'm excited for people who don't have access to the first six Nightmare on Elm Streets to check that out. So if you're out there and that's your situation, be watching those. Just binge them. Just do like one weekend or even one day if you can fit them all in. That would be phenomenal. Uh, the Why Horror, definitely recommend that one. And Chopping Mall, please on Chopping Mall. And I'm really, really excited for Slumber Party Massacre 1 and 2 because those are ones I've been meaning to check out anyway. So... Thank you, Shudder, for doing what you're doing. You're always putting some interesting stuff up there or in the system, whatever, available to be streamed. That's what makes more sense to say. Uh, so, th yes, thank you. And, um, yeah, thanks, everyone, for checking this out. Please hit the subscribe for me if you like anything I do with any video. 
that is your way to pay me back. Literally takes you a second, totally painless. Uh, put some comments down there. Let me know what you're excited about or what you're not excited about. I don't know. And then uh, give me a thumbs up if you want to. But at any rate, thank you for checking this video out. And until next time, keep it brutal.